Orlando Magic HQ, what's poppin'? So Magic fans, now that we are a couple of weeks away removed from the NBA draft lottery, and now we can kind of look forward to the NBA draft actually happening here in about the next three to four weeks, Magic fans are still extremely torn on whether the Magic should go out there and trade both of our lottery picks at number six and 11 to go out there and get some proven acquired talent to help add to this roster, to help not only make a playoff push for this season, but to also go out there and add some more talent for just the future of this team moving forward, or if the Magic should just continue to stand pat at six and 11 in the lottery and to continue to build this young core and this nucleus together through the draft. And Magic fans, if you saw the last video that we already talked about, we talked about the Magic going out there and possibly trading for a guy and a proven guy in Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics, who's gonna be in the last year of his contract. He looks like a disgruntled asset up in Boston. And the Celtics have been officially eliminated from the postseason as they lost to the Miami Heat in seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals, but this video is not about Jalen Brown. This video is about a guy who is extremely familiar in the Central Florida area. He's from the Maitland area. He went to high school here in Orange County at Edgewater High School, and he played basketball at IMG Academy in the Bradenton, Florida area. And that's gonna be with Portland Trailblazers guard, Anthony Simons. Now, Anthony Simons is the former 24th overall pick in the 2018 NBA Draft. He was the dunk contest winner in the NBA Slam Dunk Contest in 2021, and Anthony Simons is in the second year of a four-year $100 million contract. He's only 23 years of age, and he's going to be 24 years of age on June 8th, so happy early birthday to him. And while the Portland Trailblazers were a struggling team this season, and that's why they have the number three overall pick in this year's NBA Draft Lottery, Anthony Simons was nothing short of spectacular this season for the Portland Trailblazers because in 62 games, he averaged a career-high 21 points per game on 44, 37, 89 splits. And we know Anthony Simons has one of the deepest bags in the game of basketball today. He is an absolute threat offensively, and he's only continued to work on his game. And you've clearly seen how much better his game has gotten over time and the effectiveness in which he's actually putting the ball in the hoop. Now let's actually take a look at Anthony Simon's shooting split to the advanced stats, right? When you talk about his shooting from less than five feet, he's shooting 61.9%, five to nine feet, 38.8%, 10 to 14, 54.4, 15 to 19, 48.7, and from 20 to 29 feet, he's shooting 36.9%. He's doing a phenomenal job. And even when you just want to talk about his layup attempts, he's shooting 57.3% on all of his layups. His jump shots, 39.9%. And his catch and shoot three-point shots, even when he's not coming off the dribble, 37.7%. To me, Anthony Simons has just an absolute deep bag. He's got a great arsenal in his game. The guy can handle the rock. He does great in pick and roll situations. He does a great job in the catch and shoot game. And Anthony Simons is an athletic leaper. So now that we've kind of talked about what Anthony Simons can bring on the court and especially what he can do on the offensive side of the ball, now let's actually talk about why would the Portland Trailblazers even consider trading him, right? And I wanna make it very clear from the get-go that this is all speculation and this is all substantial on what the Portland Trailblazers front office is really thinking about this team this season and for this team moving forward. So if the Portland Trailblazers are thinking to themselves that we wanna go out there and we wanna acquire some talent to put around Damian Lillard, we're gonna be willing to trade the number three overall pick in this year's draft as Woj already reported on the Woj podcast that the Portland Trailblazers are willing willing to trade this year's number three overall pick in order to acquire an elite talent. Are they going to go out there and actually go and get an elite talent to pair up with Anthony Simons, Damian Lillard, Shaden Sharp, and the list goes on? I highly doubt it. And if the Portland Trailblazers can't go out there and get an elite talent to pair up with this young core, are the Portland Trailblazers going to be willing to trade Damian Lillard and say, we want to honor your ability to go out there and to possibly go out there and win a championship? That could very well happen, even though Damian Lillard's made it very clear he is very loyal to the city of Portland. I've been out there. It's a beautiful city. They embrace Rip City out there in Portland. And I know Damian Lillard wants to be loyal to this fan base, this organization of that city, and bring a championship to Portland. But if Portland cannot put the pieces around him, Damian Lillard's also made it very clear he wants to go and compete for a championship at this stage in his career. Now, this all ties back to Anthony Simons because if the Portland Trailblazers can't go out there and get talent to put around Damian Lillard to go out there and try to compete in this year's Western Conference, 
they might look at this roster and say, you know what? We're going to have to trade away Damian Lillard. We might have to trade away Anthony Simons and just build this whole thing up from the ground up. And let me drive home yet again. This is just all speculation. So if the Portland Trailblazers do go out there and say that, you know what? We're going to entertain some trade thoughts for a guy in Anthony Simons. Orlando, what can you offer us? Let's talk about some trade packages. Now, I've got two trade packages for Anthony Simons, and this first one is the one that I would personally be willing to do. The second one would kind of hurt me a little bit more, but I'm not exactly sure how much or how little you'd have to give up to get Anthony Simons, but let's talk about this first one. So in this first trade package, the Orlando Magic would receive Anthony Simons, and then the Portland Trailblazers would be receiving Gary Harris, Cole Anthony, and both of our lottery picks at number six and 11 in this year's draft. This could work for the Portland Portland Trailblazers if they decide to blow things up because you get a veteran role player in a guy like Gary Harris who can be a solid three-point shooter even though he's extremely streaky and then you get a guy in Cole Anthony who's honestly a lesser version of an Anthony Simons as of right now. Cole Anthony has done a lot for this Orlando Magic team since coming into the league just a couple of seasons ago. And Cole Anthony has really embraced that six man role. So that would definitely hurt me a lot because he is a fan favorite and he's a guy that brings a lot of character and juice and energy to this team. But I do think that you're ultimately gonna have to give up a guy like that because he is an offensive threat. The guy is a shot maker and he's got a lot of similar skill sets to a guy in Anthony Simons, but then also you're gonna have to give up both of this year's lottery picks. If the Trailblazers cannot give up that number three overall pick and the Magic wanna go out there and make this trade, it would make a lot of sense for the Portland Trailblazers to have as much draft capital as possible. And in this situation, they would have the number three overall pick, the sixth and 11th overall pick as well too. Now getting into the second trade package, like I said, this one hurts me a little bit more. Let's talk about it. So the Orlando Magic will still be receiving Anthony Simons, the Portland Trailblazers will then be receiving Chuma Okeke, Jalen Suggs, and yet again, both of our lottery picks in this year's draft. Now with Chuma Okeke, he's definitely been a guy who's never truly found his footing here in Orlando since coming into the NBA out of Auburn. And Chuma Okeke has dealt with a plethora of injuries, kind of similar to Jonathan Isaac, even though he's seen more court time than Jonathan Isaac in recent memory. Chumo Keke has been extremely sporadic when it comes to his injury history and his health. And I don't think he's ever really gotten a fair opportunity just strictly off of that. And you wish him nothing but the best. I do think Chuma can still go out there and be a solid three and D player for another team out there. And I hope he gets another opportunity out there. I just don't think he's in the long-term plans for the Orlando Magic anymore. And then when you talk about a guy in Jalen Suggs, who's probably my first or second favorite player on this Magic team, I still think he's got an extremely high ceiling as one of the elite perimeter guards in the game today, especially when you talk about his defensive tenacity and what Jalen Suggs can do offensively speaking. I do think he's only gonna continue to get better and I think Jalen Suggs still has, like I said, and extremely high ceiling. So that one definitely hurts me a lot. We've seen Jalen Suggs take over games for the Orlando Magic, but I do think you're gonna have to give up one of your better young guards, not named Markel Fultz, in order to go out there and get a guy in Anthony Simons along with your lottery picks. Now, Magic fans, when I talk about a starting five potentially of a guy in Markel Fultz and Anthony Simons in the backcourt with Paolo Bancaro going into year two, building upon his rookie of the year status, then you go into Franz Wagner going into year three alongside Wendell Carl at the five who I think is honestly more of a four but that's a topic for another day this team and that starting five right there to me is going to be one of the best starting fives in the Eastern Conference next year to me that is a guaranteed playoff lock spot in the Eastern Conference if that team continues to remain healthy which is something that's plagued the Orlando Magic in recent memory and I do think that when you still look at the depth across the board if you're going to keep one of the other guys in Jalen Suggs or Cole Anthony you're still going to have one of those guys coming off the bench Jonathan Isaac possibly still coming off the bench if he remains on this roster then you're going to talk about other guys like Michael Carter Williams, Bull Bull the list goes on. There's plenty of other players that I could sit here and talk about, but I think that starting five of Markel Fultz, Anthony Simons, Franz Wagner, Paolo Bancaro, and Wendell Carter would be a great starting five in the Eastern Conference. And I think Anthony Simons really fits into that lineup kind of seamlessly. He's not a guy that demands the ball consistently up and down the court. He can take some of that ball pressure off of guys like Bancaro, Franz, and Markel Fultz. And obviously we know he's a shooter 
off the dribble. He can obviously attack the rim. He can penetrate and create for others. And even if you want to talk about him just catching shooting threes when Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Markel Fultz dish the ball out to him, we know Anthony Simons can consistently knock down jumpers. Now, before I really wrap up this video, I just want to say yet again that this is all extremely unlikely and that this is all just substantial on what the Portland Trailblazers front office is going to be willing to do. I still don't think that they're going to be able to trade the number three overall pick and get an elite player out there in order to pair up with Damian Lillard. So I think that they're probably going to go in the direction of blowing this team up and really trading away a lot of their assets in order to try to rebuild this franchise. And like I said, that is all just substantial on what the Portland Trailblazers front office wants to do. But Magic fans, if you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys want to see Anthony Simons here in Orlando, make sure you guys go ahead and drop me a thumbs up. It takes one second and it helps me on the channel out tremendously. Make sure you guys also go ahead and hit that subscribe bell to stay tuned for more Orlando Magic content that I do here on YouTube. And make sure you guys also go ahead and follow me and Orlando Magic HQ on all of our socials, especially on Twitter. I'm very active and we're very active on there every single day. The link tree will be in the description down below so you guys can go ahead and check that out. But Magic fans, thanks again for sticking around throughout the whole video. Brett James, AKA BJ, I'm out y'all. Go Magic, baby. Peace.